Hi everyone, this is Emily Flynn. I'm, there it is. It took a few minutes for my PowerPoint slides to show up in the browser. Okay. Oh, I still can't see all the chats and everything. So I'm going to do a test audio. Please chat and let me know if you can hear me right now. I'll pop back out and check the chat and then uh, get started. Yes, you can hear me. All right, so I'm gonna go back to PowerPoint. Again, we do have a chat uh, section, which is great, but we also have a Q&A portion of Hopin. Hello, everyone. So go ahead and put any Q&A into that separate area from the chat messages, and I will get to them at the end. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my slides here. All right. Welcome, this is the Ohio Link ETD Center user group meeting. A quick agenda, I'm gonna go through an Ohio Link ETD Center update. Then I will cover the major release 3.0 that we had this summer, along with a feature overview, give some more in-depth into some of the new features and capabilities that we added, and then open the floor up for some Q&A and hopefully get some feedback from uh, all of you who've been using the new system. So the Ohio Link ETD Center update. As of the fiscal year, we have 106,000 ETDs now. Most are full text and open access. So they're freely available to users. Uh, we do have over um, 107,000 as of currently, but this was a fiscal year pie chart that I pulled together. This summer, uh, we celebrated our 20 years of the Ohio Link ETD Center, and I'm very proud that we were able to give it another major release and a brand new interface and update. It's kind of uh, fun to celebrate 20 years with a, a new system in that regard. We have over- uh, hey, Emily, I'm yes. sorry to interrupt. Your, your slides aren't advancing. No, they're not advancing? No. Nope. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Let me pop out and try that again. Oh, go back to the browser. Oh, I've also got a little helper here this evening. Okay. Oh, thank you. Here, take this. Uh, my PowerPoint is selected. Okay, can you see the slides advancing now? Yes. Okay, so here's the pie chart. Uh, going through the, the bullet points, we have 36 uh, contributing institutions to the Ohio Link ETD Center. They're all Ohio Link members. We're an academic library consortium and have Ohio Link has over 100 members itself, 36 of whom have decided to use the ETD Center and contribute uh, theses as well as dissertations to our open access system. Currently, we have 107,000 ETDs and over 110 million downloads to date. And in fiscal 21 alone, there were over 11 million downloads. This does include things like repositories that use our metadata, such as NDLTD, or um, our preservation system, which is Rosetta, as well as individual users who are downloading uh, ETDs. As part of uh, this summer, we had major release 3.0, and so I'm gonna go over that and some of the features from it as well. So we had uh, the major release went live on August 2nd. That included our ETD admin, which is the back end of the ETD center, ETD search, which is our public website for the front end, and that's where all of our published ETDs end up. We also have an OAI PMH feed that was updated, and we were able to add a MARC records format that's now available, and it produces 
RDA cataloging records that are currently up to the um, national and international standards. So we're excited to offer cataloging records through that feed now as well. We did have a couple of minor releases since then to do a few bug fixes. And also um, we customized the from field for system emails for ETD notifications. And then when there is a reply from a student to one of those system messages, it'll go to an institution instead of uh, an Ohio Link mailbox itself. So for ETD admin, we have a new user interface and faster performance, as well as digital accessibility. We have improved search capabilities, including a quick search box on the home page, and that helps um, find an ETD no matter what status report it's in. Usually those are pretty siloed, but this just searches everything the account has access to and shows you a list of results no matter what status it's in. We also have a ready to publish status, which was requested by the community. This is an intermediate step to say uh, that you've reviewed an ETD and it's ready, except you don't wanna publish it immediately. So you set it in a, in a ready to publish queue and then it takes it out of submitted. So it just helps with um, reviewer workflow and then you can um, publish them all together in a single batch when you're ready. There's also a customized stats dashboard to give insight into uh, ETD downloads. And then we've also added a new feature called preview ETD that students and reviewers and admins all have access to that shows you what the ETD will look like when it does go live. So it's that sense of uh, what it will, um, show when it's published and hopefully offers another chance to catch any errors before something is submitted or published. So in lieu of a live demo right now, I'm just gonna show a few screenshots just to give you a sense of these new capabilities and features. So here we have the new homepage for a logged in user. This is an admin account. So they have um, accounts and institution at the top for settings and more quick links down at the bottom to help get them to uh, particular important parts of the site quicker. Hey, Emily. Yes. This is Tim. Hi, um, Tim. I'm not seeing your uh, presentation advancing here. Oh, you're still, it's not doing it anymore? There, now it's with the, uh, the page with the uh, quick links and all that. Okay, so you can see it now? Well, can you advance? Can you advance another? Can you see that one? Yeah, we can see that. Okay. Publish? Yep. So did you see this slide with my bullet points? No, I, no, I didn't see it. Okay. I'm going to jump back just a second to show these slides. I guess I'll stay in this view. I don't know why it wouldn't be showing you my other ones, but so this is just the, the major release for August 2nd. And then we had the minor releases on August 5th and September 16th. And then I'll put this up just for a moment so people can have it. These are the bullet points I just talked through. And then I had just flipped over to the first screenshot. So this is the logged in homepage with the quick search bar here. And then my ETDs is clickable and will show um, a drop down of all the ETD reports that are available to an account. So for admin, it'll have uh, many more listed than a reviewer might. This is a screenshot of the ready to publish uh, report. As you can see, there are three here. I did um, blue out the status change by that'll just be an account name. And then you can either select them all or do the check boxes and hit publish selected, and then they'll immediately go. This is that intermediate step to get them out of the submitted queue. But if you're not quite ready to publish, you can put them in this temporary holding area. If you need, you can always revert something back to submitted and it'll put it in that submitted status report and queue again, which you can then return to a student or look at it later and publish it. 
the stats dashboard. This is the upper portion of it to show the defaults and all the various settings that can be set. You can run it by submission site if you have multiples or even by department. We do have some preset ranges, but we also give you the ability to select any date you'd like and then the number of results you want returned. So here's a brief sample for John Carroll. Uh, we didn't filter by department. This is just all time. They don't have too many ETDs, but they still have um, some with a few thousand downloads. So that's the beginning of their report to show the, the download in descending order. As part of the submission form now, we've added this preview ETD right next to the submit button. And so you can click that as a student or other user logged in and you can see this is what, would, what the ETD would look like if it went live right now and was published gives you a sense of what the page is going to look like. This one has a likely has an embargo requested because we're not seeing the file. We're seeing text instead. So that's what that is. And we can see it has an ORCID in there uh, just to give the user a sense of what it's going to be like and what information is, is available. For ETD search, it also has a new user interface. And we're very excited to add full text searching to all the documents. We have uh, digital accessibility on ETD search as well, along with updated institution web pages and updated advanced search and filters on the search results web page. And now there's a way to share a link to a saved search, which um, was also a community request. You know, someone wanted to send it out to um, program reviewers for accreditation and show a certain subset of their ETDs. And now you can do whatever search you want, put the parameters and then uh, share that link and someone will get the same uh, search run. So now to walk through the screenshots, this is the uh, new homepage and the updated institution pages. We now have totals for ETD counts that we didn't have surfaced before. So this is by each institution. We break out um, submission sites as well as departments and author names. Here we're seeing the top 10 downloads and then down below there's also a section for um, recent ETD uploads. The advanced search, uh, when you do a search, it'll remain at the top of the page and now results will be below. So you can scroll down and see stuff, but you can also scroll back up to see what your advanced search was and make any adjustments and rerun it. And then here's the save search link I was uh, describing. So I ran a search and then there's this little hyperlink that says link to this search. You'll get this search box and you can either copy this URL or just hit this little copy icon with the clipboard and it'll save it in your, um, in your browser for you so you can paste it somewhere else. And uh, when a user runs that search, it's good for up to a year of activity. So if you use it, then it'll extend another year. And if someone else clicks it, it'll go another year out. Um, so inactive searches won't get, you just would generate another link for it if you need another one. And what this means is when they use that link, the same search and filters and parameters will be run on the new current content of ETDs. So over time, it could increase in search results, but they will get the same subset of uh, results that you initially ran it for. Just briefly, I want to touch on um, MARC records. We have a website that was previously used and um, for cataloging and created by the wonderful people at Kent State University. It's called ETD Cat. Our developers um, because it's a separate code, we've decided to use OAI PMH, which is a feed that we already upkeep, and they were able to add a mark feed to it, which um, with help from uh, 
OhioLink member catalogers, we were able to bring up to RDA standards, to the most current ones, and uh, with the help of Mark Edit, which is a free cataloging software, you can uh, pull really good uh, preliminary records from the ETD Center using this feed. So I'm currently working on a manual. I'll be doing a short little video and a quick start guide for people um, in order to help with uh, explaining and uh, learning how to use the new feed with, with MARC records. It'll mean that maintenance is easier for the developers and quicker to update as needed. So we will be retiring the ETD CAT website uh, and more information will go out on our user listserv for ETD listserv. Just a quick uh, screenshot. Mark Edit has a harvester built in, so you put in the URL, you put in the set name, so this is the prefix on your accession numbers, you put in a start and end date if you want, you click OK, and you get your Mark records right there. So we'll have more information that goes into further detail, but that's just a little preview of what, we're, what we've been working on for cataloging records. So at this point, I'll open it up to Q&A, any feedback. Uh, I do have my contact information, but I'm gonna jump back to the browser since PowerPoint's been uh, giving us trouble here. Okay. I guess that's still showing up, isn't it? Okay. Does anyone have any questions? I'm gonna go over to the Q&A section. I don't see anything. Again, feel free to unmute your mic too if you want to ask me something or. Um... Hey, Emily, thanks. Um, just really want to say that I think the updates are great. Um, the speed in particular uh, has been really, really helpful. So, you know, just navigating through the system is is much better. So, you know, really appreciate that. And, and then some of the new features as well, um, you know, have really enhanced things. So. Um, I, I don't really have any questions, but, you know, just really oh, appreciate great to your, hear. your guys, uh, you know, efforts and, and I think it's paid off. So good job. Thank you. <laughs> I would second what uh, Tim said. And I also especially like um, some of the um, updates uh, regarding uh, embargoes, um, you know, being like like it doesn't default, you know, you have to select. And I think that's just a really good safeguard you know, to avoid something slipping through unembargoed. Yes, that was the whole um, point of that. So in order to, so I told the developers I want it to be a required field, but it has to be set to blank. But in order to, so that the reviewer would choose yes or no, grant the embargo or not. And in order to do that, they had to make the student say, yes, embargo my work or no, don't. And then once they did that, it opened it up so that they could, require the field and then make sure it gets uh, checked appropriately. So that's, I'm glad we were able to to do that. And also, Terry, I think you helped with wording as well for um, explaining what exactly gets embargoed. So now it's more clear that it's the document only and metadata such as the title abstract will be available. It's only your document. And I think that um, will hopefully help users as well. Yeah, that's a great addition to we've had, you know, every now and then somebody would say, well, I didn't know that was going to be out there kind of thing, you know. So yep. we tried to make that clear, but it's great that it's, you know, supported there as well. And then hopefully with the preview button, they'll be able to actually see, oh, yes, this is actually what it's going to look like. So I'm, I'm happy about that preview feature. Hopefully people will use it. I really like it because <laughs> I think it's a it's an, it's nice to be able to, to show people. We also have Jasmine with us. She likes to sit in on my meetings. So anytime I have a call or webinar, um, I don't know if she's been giving you stink eye yet, but she's she's trying to work me for treats. So that's that's what she's doing here. <laughs> she had to make her when appearance. You said Jasmine, I looked over under the people column. I'm like, I don't remember seeing it. Oh, the cat. <laughs> the cat's name is Jasmine. Yeah, she, she likes to attend our our morning meetings and. 
seems pretty content. Well, she's bugging me for treats. So she looks nice and cuddly, <laughs> but she's going to start uh, putting her paw on me in a minute. Hey, I just, I did have a question. Uh -huh. in, I don't know if this is an update or it just happened here recently. We've had a couple students write us and say, hey, I just got a notice that says my draft is going to be deleted. And, you know, what's happened to my document? And of course, then I look and they, yeah, they got a copy in the draft section. Um, was that done before? Did they send them a notice that their draft was expiring? They, thank you, Kitty. Uh, they did, except I'm not sure it worked 100% of the time. So uh, that was also a bug that was fixed before we ever started working on this project. But they're probably going out, well, they're certainly going out consistently now. Um, what happens is usually students will have multiple copies of their ETD in the system. Um, it's not uncommon, but I, I don't know. I, probably most don't do it, but some do. And in that case, if an ETD has been, um, and inactive we mean like no one has gone into the submission form and made a change or update to it for 30 days, it's considered inactive. And on the 29th day, the system will say, hey, it's going to be deleted. On the 30th day, it'll actually delete it and then email them again to say, hey, your draft was deleted. It's a way to help um, keep the system clean so that we don't and to avoid duplicates. So if someone who has a published email gets one, that just means they had a duplicate in there <laughs> in their um, yeah. account. So I know sometimes uh, we cleared out, I think it was our test system, which emailed people a while ago. And some people had multiples in there. And so it was confusing because they were old, but they were set to go out anyway. Um, usually it doesn't happen too often, but if you do get, get that question, that's that's what it's for. I had two over the last, as you know, over the last like month and a half. Mm -hmm. um, and for both of them, um, they were, they didn't differentiate between draft and something that was already accepted and submitted, you know, whether or not it was published. And so I don't know. I mean, does the draft email specifically say a draft? Yep. Can't remember. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's very explicit. Your draft yeah. ETD will be deleted because there's been no activity on it. Right, because I, I got, you know, a couple of panicked emails. Oh, you know, here's my confirmation that, you know, I submitted it and everything. And it's like, right, but you had this other one, so you don't have to worry about it. But, you know, people are panicky anyway. So That's what I got, too. You know, that might be uh, worth putting in the student manual then, um, maybe in the troubleshooting section, because not everyone will see it. I don't know how many of you actually use it you're free to use those manuals or not as you choose but you know letting people know if you see anything about a draft deleted that's likely because they had a duplicate copy um if and like you said terry as long as they got you know your submission has been um your etd has been submitted uh it's it's no longer in draft status so that it's you know that's not what what is being deleted. And especially if they've gotten a your ETD has been published email, you know, it's it's just that draft before they've submitted it. So it's just sitting there and they made another copy. And of course they submit the one and then forget about the other. And that's the one that they're getting notified about. Any update on the emails that come to us that are coming to a, you know, a specific person? Yeah, so we did, um, I probably didn't email out the group because it's just been so, it seems like it's been super busy and here we are at the end yeah. of September. It was updated and you, you now have access to it in um, submission site settings or submission site information. So if you log in, Tim, and you go to the submission sites, you should now, where the notify and the library email address is, there's now a from email address on the very end of that column or on that row. Okay. And you can go in and edit it and set it to, you know, ideally a departmental email or 
Oh, good. Whichever email you'd prefer. Okay. You can leave it blank and it'll come from the system, but then any replies will also go back to the system and I'll have to catch them at some point and forward them. So, okay. <laughs> you know, you, you do want something in there if you have something um, just so that you do get those student replies, but you can now go in and, and change it yourself. Fantastic. Um, will you, will you email that out about that? How to do yeah, that? Yeah, I'll make sure to, to forward you the information. Yep. Okay. Just in case. Um, yeah, that's great. Cause I, uh, <laughs> my name was all over those things, you know, and I kept like, what is all this? And then, you know, oh yeah, it's a published. And then when somebody publishes a document, of course I got an email from that too. So I was getting an email on my account. And um, so anyway, I had to move those over, but so that's really good. That's really good news. Well, good, good. I know that's the, the tricky thing. And it sounded simple, right? Like, of course, just set it to the admin and it'll just come from there. But now right. it looks like it comes from people. And so I've also had an admin tell me like students will email me thinking I physically sent this email. So they think it's appropriate to respond now. So I'm getting more responses. <laughs> yeah. Because with the mailbox, I hardly saw anything, but we'd sometimes get replies and I didn't want them to get lost. Right. Because some of the students are like, I'm waiting to hear back from you. I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> don't reply to a system email. So it's a. Uh, it's been more complicated than I initially realized when we made that change. So yeah, we've, we've made it customizable by you guys now, so you can edit it. That's great. You know, and, and of course we had, you know, a couple of occasions where they would respond to the Ohio link thing and, um, you know, we, we didn't know. And then, yeah. you know, it was an, so this will be, it's great that we get note if we definitely want them to write us uh, with any questions, you know, during the submission process. So. That's a big, big plus as well. Good update. Excellent. Well, is there anything else people want to know or ask? I see we have six people and we're clearly three of them. So I'm not sure who else. So Vim was here. I saw her name in the in chat. Here. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess I can't see the list of participants, so that's okay. All right, well, I'm glad uh, you all were able to join us. And uh, if you have any more questions, as always, let me know or email support because if I'm in the office or not, someone will be able to help you sooner. Uh, and Tasha has been um, expanding her breadth and depth of ETDs as well, as we have more tickets going into the system that she sees too. So she's been helping me out with some of the easier ones and, and getting them uh, answers sooner. So that's good too. Tasha's always uh, our tech support guru who's who's uh, taking care of tickets. So if you see something from her, it's a, it's a good thing. <laughs> I'd like to remind everyone there's still a few minutes left to get your wine or whatever it is that you want to get for our virtual cocktail hour. So that comes important to work. <laughs> I noticed everybody, it seemed like everybody was home. I think, I think I'm the only one that's in the office. I'm in the office. I just work remotely, but this is still coffee. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> got to stay awake this evening. Well, hi, Savim. Hi, Steve. Thanks for, uh, making it over. Glad to hear it's uh, fast and nice for you too, see, Steve. And thanks for Savim and Joan for helping with the cataloging uh, manual and testing out the, the records. They're making sure everything looks good on those, so. Excellent. Glad to have their help with that. All right, well, we can end a few minutes early so that you guys can go get whatever drink you need or uh, take a bio break before cocktail hour ha happens. Uh, enjoy the rest of your ETD conference. Good to see everyone. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Emily. See everybody. Thanks, everyone.